Okay, so over the years, we've dealt with this in different ways. One of the things we did a lot was we did these J-1 visas. What a J-1 visa is, it allows a foreign student to come and work in the United States for six months. They're allowed to work for four months, travel for a couple months, and their visa is done, and they have to go home. We were doing tremendous amounts of these, and mostly they were kids from South America, Brazil, Peru, those areas, and that was fantastic. But once the pandemic hit, they shut down all those J-1 visas, so that made it tough because I think the ski area hires like 40 or 50, maybe even more than that every year. So that has had an impact on us. The other place, I'd mentioned Red River has 400-ish people. Another place that we do draw some of our labor pool from is Cuesta, which is just right down the hill from us towards, mm-hmm. as you're going towards Taos. Traditionally, Cuesta has supplied a lot of employees for us, and they really have. Those folks in Cuesta have always stepped up, and they really have helped build this town because we just don't have the people to do that. So I've been very grateful for all those folks in Cuesta. Another place that the town has done is there was a couple of lodges, older lodges on the east side of town, and the city of Red River actually purchased those lodges just for that purpose, for affordable housing. And they keep the rents down so people can afford to live here and work here. And a lot of times, if people will stick around, I mean, the economy is good in Red River. They can eventually work their way out of one of the lower-paying jobs and work themselves into something else and hopefully afford to purchase something at some time. So when you ask me what we're doing, it's really a combination of multiple things that go on. Now, wages have risen also. Just an FYI, my son... 16 years old is a busboy at one of the restaurants in town, and they're paying him $20 an hour. Nice. With that said, if you've got kids or folks listening to this broadcast and they're thinking about their kid wants to come up and, you know, maybe get away from the farm or the family business or whatever for a while and come to Red River and work for a season, my God, we would love to have them. The money's good here. They'll have a great time. And I so encourage it, kids to come up here and do that because they can pick the job they want. I mean, do they want to bartend? Do they want to do horseback rides? Do they want to do tours, fishing guides, Jeep tours? And we need every Everything. So it's not just a horrible, minuscule job that are being offered. There's mm-hmm. everything in the world being offered. So mm-hmm. you know, ski instructing in the winter, chairlift operators, we need everybody. So I highly encourage those kids to come up. And really, it's a half-day drive from their house. So they're not even that far from home. And one thing, too, Rob, that's interesting to me, you talk about the Panhandle connections. Uh, we out here across the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle are the heart of the people that support Red River in that area. But you'll find a lot of connections from the Texas Panhandle as well to your business community, won't you? There are a lot of folks from Texas that own businesses up there and and live there and operate them. Oh, absolutely. And every one of those folks, most of them have come out of West Texas and Oklahoma, and they came here on vacation and they've decided, man, can I make it here in Red River? Can I do this? And a lodge comes for sale or something and they'll purchase that. Or I've got plenty of people here in town that have done just startup businesses. 